We used to fish for five days straight. There was so much fish, it was such an abundance. But now, he's out there fishing right now, and he has one fish. One fish for a 24-hour opening. I've seen like, so many dead pinks in some of the rivers, the butters, the, the, the cod stalks, watching the fish decline before my eyes. I've seen the near disappearance of kelp in a lot of our sites. With our hooligans, we used to watch them swim up the river and it'd be black, but now there's none. It's all disappearing now. Herring plants overfish too. That's my freezer they're cleaning out. How do you think we feel? We live here. You come up here just to fish it out and then go back to your house. We're seeing and, and living through a time where it's really hard for our people to uh, sustain ourselves, you know, economically or even for, for food. We have the values of taking care of what is out there, planning for a sustainable future, working with our neighbours to collectively take care of the ocean because we can't be healthy without a healthy ocean. Marine Protected Area Network is basically a refuge for different species. We've worked since 2007 to identify areas that, through our own local knowledge, have saw depletions. Nowhere on the central coast other than rockfish are there any areas that are refuge for any species. So it was very important for us to make sure that species actually had a place where there was going to be no pressure. I don't think you need to be a rocket scientist to know that if you protect an area, stocks will rebuild. And that's been proven time and time again. Uh, there's places like out in Aristobal when the federal government was going to announce a rock fish conservation area. One of the companies was really upset. They thought that was going to be the death of their business. Fast forward almost 25 years later, they're reporting it's one of the best things that's, that's ever happened to them. Uh, stocks have been rebuilding. It's feeding the west coast of that island where they have their operation. And we want to replicate that model uh, all throughout the territories. Last year, some crab closures were implemented by DFO, and we've only done one crab survey so far this year, but just seeing the difference was amazing. The populations in every one of our sites was larger than what we remember from last year. That's the huge difference now between, you know, our way of thinking and the world's way of thinking. The way the world is now, if you hook into something good, you just keep going until the well's dry. Look at all the dead canneries on the coast. They roll in it until there's nothing to roll in anymore and then you move on. It's just always important to remember that you have to leave enough behind to, for them to sustain themselves. Give them a fighting chance. Every summer we try to take out the kids, show them how to fish, to try and keep it alive. Eh? We're not going anywhere and we want to make sure that we have those resources available for us for the next seven generations. It's not for me because I'm, I'm getting up in age and I'd like to see that for my grandkids and my sons. I have two kids and they need a Bella Bella future. The opportunities are here. I think the opportunities have always been here. We have fresh air, we have salmon in our water, and I think we have to protect it for longevity, for sustainability, the opportunities are all around us. If we're harvesting responsibly, if we're putting into uh, the regrowth of our coast. You know, we're practicing that tradition of, you know, leaving a place better than we found it. Just imagine what we can achieve again here.